I'm flying my Guo Love United Airlines. Welcome to me today is First Officer <laughs> Pam Dangle. Something happened to me during uh, the flight. I don't know, I really, really like this gel pillow here. This is my other light in China. I really <laughs> did. Well, my mother's a big United flyer. She really uh, brought me on United on lots of flights. It's really nice having a hot shower after a 12 hour long flight. Here's the bartender at the Polaris Lounge. Hi! What a great lounge, the United Polaris. Way to go. I'm at Hong Kong Airport. Today I'm flying my Guo Love United Airlines. Guess who I met here? Karina. Hi, good morning. She's actually even an old timer than me. I grew up with United in Hong Kong because my first international flights on United, my first business class flights on United, my first first class international flights also on United. And Karina worked in Hong Kong United since 1992. 92. And she just gave me this really beautiful um, US Olympic team pin here at the United Lounge. Hi, I'm the captain on flight 862 today, Hong Kong to San Francisco, 777-300, brand new airplane. It's gonna be 11 hours, 56 minute flight. Flight level 320 will be our starting altitude at Mach 0.83. Assisting me today is First Officer Pam Gangle in the right seat here. <laughs> hey, today's flight is going to take us up over China, up across Japan. We're doing that to stay west of a typhoon that's going to hit Japan. From there we're going straight across the ocean, coasting in around the northwest of America. I promise it's going to be a smooth flight all the way today. Like these slippers on board. They're very, very soft. Amazing slippers. It's actually coming to team boxes, it's not coming to the pack. Very warm toasted nuts here. Very nice United tradition.
eating lots and lots of vegetables. Apple pie, tiramisu, and a macro for dessert. I have an apple pie and an ice cream sundae. Okay, with the chocolate? Yes. Okay. So the food was really good, but you know, I just think something happened to me during uh, the flight. I became very jet lagged. Maybe I didn't rest well last night. I was working on my YouTube video until 2 a.m. I had about four hours sleep. And uh, I'm definitely taking a toll from my constantly traveling. I'm gonna take it easy now and take a good rest. Started with United. Started in July of 1992 in JFK. In JFK. Yes. And now you moved to Hong Kong. Yes. And I've been here since June of 1995. Oh, after three years you moved to Hong Kong. Yes. So you lived in Hong Kong over 20 some years now. Yes. How was it? How was your experience about Hong Kong? Like, do you like to call <laughs> Hong Kong home now? I feel like when I first came to Hong Kong, I felt like I was a ride. This was my other life in China. I really did. <laughs> I mean, I felt like I connected. I was in place. I mean, it's a very iconic city because I'm originally from Washington, D.C., another iconic city. Yeah. So it was just like, it was wonderful. You know, when I first told my friends I was transferred to Hong Kong, they said, oh, that's so far, and it's there, whatever. I told my aunt, my favorite aunt in the whole wide world, I said, Cookie, I'm transferred to Hong Kong. She said, when are you going and when can I come over? And they've been here about six times anyway, so yeah, but I love Hong Kong. That's amazing. Yeah. I think United play a huge role shaping my love towards the aviation because um, I used to go out after school to Hong Kong to watch airplanes in and out of the Kai Tak, you know, in the middle of downtown, the airport on the runway yes. over the water. and. I watched countless United coming in and out. I remember there was two daily flights to San Francisco, non-stop around the world to Los Angeles, Tokyo, Singapore, uh, you name it, Chicago, JFK, and rode the mileage plus when I was 12. <laughs> and I started earning miles and status when you fly a lot Trans-Pacific because to go by the miles. And I started getting upgraded to business class. So my first business, my first international first class, all thankfully to United because of the mileage plus scheme. So um, over the years, I'm very, very, I still have a very, very special place of United in my heart, in my family as well. My mother's a big United flyer. She really uh, brought me on United on lots of flights. When every time I fly the United 747, I felt like I'm the happiest kid in the sky. So good morning. I was really tired earlier, um, but I had about six, seven hours sleep. Really, really good sleep on the uh, United Polaris. I think the bedding is one of the best in the world. Um, you know, I've got two blankets, very warm, one under and they got a comforter on top. So I really, really like this gel pillow here. This really gives a lot of support. So I have two pillow and I put the hard one on top and the soft one to sleep and the bed goes very, very flat. So um, 
I really like the Polaris because the sleep quality was so good, the bedding was so nice. midnight in Hong Kong, 12 hours after takeoff, and uh, feeling refreshed again. So nice. Here's Wendy, here's the bartender at the Polaris Lounge. Hi. Tell us about the lounge, okay, Wendy. So when United, retired their 747s and brought in their dream line. It was a perfect opportunity for them to go ahead and bring in United Polaris. Yes. So here we are. So we are a company with the dream line introduction and we are 28,000 square feet, 14,000 on each floor. You will find a complimentary buffet and a dining room agenda to that. You'll find staff will follow you all throughout Polaris to see if they can help you with any of your needs. We have a business lounge area where you can make any of your calls that you need to or yell at people behind glass doors. And across from that, the United employees will help with any arrangements you have. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thanks for coming in. If you go a little bit farther, you'll find our bar snacks, which is 7,000 square feet away. It's always on a little joke. And then we have a big screen TV. Downstairs, we have a napping area, a sleeping quarters, and a noise control library. So this is Polaris, we're all complimentary, we're here to serve you, welcome to Polaris. Wendy, what did you recommend for me for a drink? Our paper plane, okay. one of our players' best drinks, the paper plane, plane the most popular drink we have here. Paper plane. Yes. We're going to go ahead and take our paper plane, it's going to start mm -hmm. with our Aperol. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to add our long infused Rittenhouse. This is the Rittenhouse that we use, 100 proof, uh -huh. straight whiskey rye. Long tea. Okay. So you're making the paper plane right now, right? I'm making uh -huh. the paper plane. Okay. I'm still on that same drink. I know it's taking oil. <laughs> <laughs> so we have lemon juice to the paper plane. And then our Amaro Nino, which I like to consider our Italian brandy. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's an Italian pear chief. Oh, okay. The sipping drink. And I'll show you the label. So then we take Sam, we just shake this up. <laughs> you know, I, mean, I don't even know how to make not that face, that struggling face. So we are called to double strain this drink. So we take a strainer here, mm -hmm. and we take our regular bar strainer, cap it, and pour it. You now it's one of the finalists on Food Network, and I failed. You can see why? Just kidding, Sam, I wasn't. And then we go ahead and garnish this lovely paper plane with the hardest part of my job is this right here, Sam. You ready? Mm -hmm. I'm ready. Putting this little paper plane oh, yeah. with these big snicker fingers I got. And there's your players. That is such a nice string, Mandy. Awesome. Thanks, Sam. Love it. Glad you like it. What a great lounge, the United Polaris. Way to go. Mm -hmm. 